Let's start now. OK, uh, today's session is uh, our brief introduction of uh, this uh, technique called the so-called test-driven development, or TDD in short. Uh, so I will give you a brief uh, introduction, and uh, then we will do some uh, uh, live coding or uh, exercise quickly together. And after give you some simple exercise, then we can do some kata. Uh, and this session will take about uh, three hours. Um, so let's, OK, let's start. Um, OK, uh, just some brief history. Uh, since uh, many of you uh, probably know a bit of TDD, so who knows that uh, um, who is the guy who discovered this technique called TDD? Does anyone know the name of the guy who coined this term? Martin, not Martin Fowler. <laughs> Unfortunately, not Martin. OK, uh, his name is called Kent Beck. Yeah, so this is uh, the gentleman, and he wrote a book called The Test-Driven Development by Example, and uh, uh, where um, he uh, made this uh, technique famous. And so this is what this technique is about. Um, so I will go a bit faster since uh, uh, we started late today. Uh, but in short, TDD uh, is basically a technique for you to write test cases during the development, and what makes it unique is you write your test cases first, uh, first before you start writing your production code. So as you can see in this chart, uh, there are three steps you really will do when you follow the TDD approach. Uh, the first step is to uh, start writing a test case. Uh, that, of course, uh, without a real uh, lo business logic or uh, a business implementation that make this test case pass, the firstly, it will fail. And then the second step, um, you are going to write some uh, code to make this test case pass. And in the third step, uh, you know, once you make the test case pass, uh, usually uh, if you use any uh, uh, unit test framework, uh, the color of the test cases would become from red, become green. And after that, you can do some refactoring in your code uh, to make your code clean, uh, easy to read, easy to maintain, etc. And once you're done with the third step, then you can go back to your first step. Write another test case, make it a pass, and then refactor your code and test cases. Uh, it looks pretty simple, but actually later you will see that actually there are many, uh, many uh, areas you need to pay attention to in order to be more proficient in this technique. Uh, uh, so for example, many people, uh, it's very hard for many people to get started by writing test case. Because by writing test case first, you will see uh, some of the errors by, reported by your compilers, etc., and uh, that makes you nervous. Uh, and then uh, also uh, when you, in the second step, uh, later, you'll see that many people, they have, there's a pitfall that sometimes you tend to write more code than necessary to make your, te make your code pass. And uh, uh, for example, some people, uh, well, developers writing the code, they tend to think of uh, different conditions, like what, what if A happens, what if B happens, what if error condition happens. Your mind will just keep thinking about those things, while uh, many of those things are not really related to your current task to make your test case pass. Uh, so we need to try to avoid those pitfalls. Um, uh, then in the third step, uh, many people, again, uh, once you uh, write your test case and you make it a pass, uh, sometimes we just forget. We just move on to the next scenario or next, next test case without uh, looking into our current implementation. Are there any room for improvements, et cetera? Uh, so uh, sometimes you also easily forget uh, about the third step. So this is very simple, but it definitely takes uh, quite some practice before you are uh, familiar or before you can uh, do this uh, every day. OK, uh, so um, just to quickly show you some of the benefits, um, why this technique is useful. So in short, uh, if you follow TDD, uh, you can write clean code that works. So not only clean code, but clean code that works. Uh, there are a few reasons. Um, one reason is uh, if you follow this TDD approach uh, during your development, typically you can get faster feedback uh, about uh, whether you, you have done something wrong, whether your changes uh, are correct, whether you introduce bugs, et cetera. You, you, typically, you need those kind of feedbacks whenever you make changes uh, into your code. And the TDD is an approach uh, that can give you faster feedback. So you can, I'll show you two graphs here. The graph on the left basically shows you the different techniques or different tools that give you feedback during the development cycle. Uh, so you, you probably notice some of the terms like pair programming, unit test, or, or standard meeting, acceptance test, iteration plan. So there are different ways for you to get feedback from your, uh, your development life cycle. And you can see that uh, some of the techniques uh, give you faster feedback, like for unit test. 
typically, uh, if you write unit tests to test whether uh, you did something wrong or whether your changes are okay, uh, you can easily get feedback in a few minutes. But if you, uh, if you, if you, uh, if you, let's say, if you only uh, release everything into production and then test in production, so called test in production, and then uh, once you discover something uh, happens, goes wrong in production, and you would like to fix that bug or whatever, it usually takes longer time. If not days, could be weeks, etc. Depends. So you can easily see that uh, if you uh, if you write unit tests, etc., those feedbacks are faster. And why faster feedback is better? Because uh, you, you, if you look at the chart on the right, uh, this gives you a kind of a graph to show you the cost involved in order to uh, fix some issue uh, discovered by those dif different feedback loops. So if you uh, discover some issue um, that using the TDD technique, uh, you can see that uh, the cost is uh, relatively low because you can quickly fix a problem even before you release it into your, your, your QA environment or, or your production environment. But then, uh, if you uh, discover these issues later using some other feedback loops, uh, such as uh, during your functional testing or acceptance testing, the user tells you that something is wrong. And if you want to fix something at that time, the cost would be much higher. So uh, just in short, uh, if you follow TDD, uh, you get faster feedback, and uh, you can discover bugs uh, or issues much quicker. And uh, then uh, they will you will introduce less cost uh, in maintaining your code base. Uh, another f f uh, benefit, uh, which is uh, if you follow this TDD approach over the period, you will accumulate uh, a, a set of uh, test cases. Those test cases will become a safety net for you. Whenever you uh, make new features into your system or whenever you make changes, uh, if, you, if your changes happen to uh, introduce some bugs, uh, then the, the test cases would fail, and you will uh, be uh, getting get notified quickly, and uh, you can uh, watch out. Uh, they basically help you to catch the regression errors easily. And on the third benefit, uh, if you follow TDD approach, uh, it helps you to focus on one task at a time. So, for example, just now we showed that there are three steps during a TDD approach, and uh, you should focus on one thing at a time. You should either be focusing on writing a failing test, or you should be uh, trying to make the test case pass, or you should be doing some refactoring. So you, you should focus on one of the three things at a time. And if you follow this approach, your mind will be very focused on that task. Once you make that task pass, move on to the next one. And uh, if you get into this kind of a rhythm, uh, you can notice that uh, your, your performance will be improved as well because you are focused. Um, and this also later I, I will show you, if you follow these uh, techniques, uh, usually you will be moving in baby steps. And the baby steps basically means that your task is easier, simpler, uh, it's faster to implement, and uh, uh, easier to make it right. Um, OK, uh, and then one, another benefit is if you follow this approach by writing test cases first uh, before you write your production code, one additional benefit is it forces you to think from the end user's perspective. Let's say if you're writing an API, uh, and then if you write the test case for that API first, basically that forces yourself to think, oh, how should I uh, develop this API? What are the name? What are the parameters? When you think of those things, actually you're thinking from the end user's angle. And that basically helps you to write uh, some APIs that are easier to use and uh, at least easier to test. So that makes your code uh, easier to maintain in the long run. And uh, another benefit is uh, uh, you, you can produce less waste uh, in, your, uh, in your development. So just imagine that uh, 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 if, uh, okay, putting two, there are two ways to view this. One way is if you always uh, write your test case first and uh, you only write enough production code to make the test case pass, you're pretty sure that uh, whatever you write uh, is needed because uh, you start with a real useful test case and you, you know that whatever code you write are useful because they, they, they are used or they're tested by the test case. On the other, other, on the other way, uh, like if you start um, writing your production code without any test case, uh, you might uh, think about different scenarios and make your code very complicated, but then it turns out that uh, in the end, some of the scenarios never happen. Uh, some of the, the code that you wrote are never used. So that can happen because you never uh, drive them from the testing approach. Okay, uh, okay uh, maybe uh, let's start our first TDD exercise. Uh, so do you all have your environment set up already? Okay, uh, I will do it together with you. So uh, I probably, uh, because many of you are new to DDD, so I will probably just write the code first. You can uh, observe what I'm doing. 
Uh, but if you're already familiar with TDD, uh, you can uh, start writing code uh, at the same time while I was, I'm writing it. OK, so the first exercise we're going to do today is to implement a number sequence generation, uh, sorry, number sequence generator uh, using the TDD approach. Uh, so um, I wouldn't tell you what this number sequence is, but I will give you the number one by one. And uh, uh, let's uh, write test cases when each time when we see a new number, and uh, then we will slowly, uh, one by one, discovering the pattern in this number sequence. So um, let's, let's see. Uh, OK, uh, maybe. OK, let's, start, let's set up your, 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 your project first. Uh, OK, uh, just a moment. Um, so let's set up the uh, project together. Uh, for me, I'm going to use uh, uh, Java today, and I'm going to use uh, IntelliJ as the IDE. Uh, I chose it. Uh, I know that many of you know JavaScript. I'm uh, probably not familiar with Java. Uh, but it's OK. The language syntax uh, isn't that difficult, because all these problems are simple. Uh, you can do the similar, similar thing using your preferred language as well. I, I'm going to show it using this IDE because uh, later, uh, also in later sessions, I'm going to show you some of the refactoring techniques. And uh, Java and in combination with this IDE makes refactoring uh, very easy. Uh, so this, this is the reason why uh, I chose it today. Um, okay, let's start. Uh, uh, all create a new project using whatever language that you prefer. Uh, you can let's start creating a new project. I'm going to create a new project using uh, Java here. Um, OK, so coding gym is my group ID. Uh, the project name, I, we call it magic, uh, number, magic number sequence. OK, and uh, oh, it's too small, right? Uh, uh, OK, once I start the ID, I will make the font bigger. Um, OK, so I just uh, finished setting up my project. I'm ready to st start writing my code. So are you guys ready? Cool. Uh, just make an empty project. Don't write the code first. Uh, I will show you the first number. And uh, once we see the first number, we will start writing the first test case to, uh, to develop the, the logic for this uh, number generator. OK, uh, let's see. What is the first number? Oops, where is my? OK, here it is. Um, OK, uh, so the first number in this sequence is 0. So, uh, so now I'm going to start writing my code. But as you will see, I will start writing from the test case. And uh, then uh, bef after I finish test case, I will move on to make the test case pass. And then I will do some refactoring along the way. OK, uh, let's start. Um, OK, where do I start my test case? Uh, in Java, I need to put my, uh, the test case under this test Java folder. Uh, let's create a new test case. Let's call it uh, magic uh, number. Uh, okay, rather uh, magic um, maybe magic sequence. Okay, magic sequence test. Okay, I just call this magic sequence sequence test, and uh, I will create my first test case. And uh, my first test case, I would call it. Um, okay, let me re increase the font. Um, Oops. Come on. Is it better? Mm, OK, maybe just use this. OK, uh, sure. And let me change to a live sim. Uh, OK, how do I change the sim? It should be control tutor. Um, Postal scheme or color scheme? Um, yes. Yes, I'm going to change it. Default. Ah, it's so ugly. You got to restart the ID. You should kick it after you restart the ID. Okay. Sidebars. <laughs> okay. Okay. So um, the first sequence is zero, is it? Yeah, the first sequence is zero. Uh, I'm about to write my first test case, but then. Stopped by all these issues. Come on, come on, where's my IntelliJ? Ah, oh, it's here. IntelliJ has this presentation mode. Oh, right. You can try that. OK. 
Okay, so it's view uh, presentation. Okay, let's see. Is it better? Okay, uh, maybe I can still make this font bigger. Uh, uh, my magic mouse doesn't work. Okay, let's increase font size. I'll do it again. No, oh, this is, seems to be the biggest. Oh, yes. okay. Okay, uh, let's continue with my first test case. Uh, I would uh, name my first test case as test. Uh, first uh, number is uh, zero. Okay, uh, so then uh, usually for your test case, you need to write some kind of assertion to assert that your code behaves in a certain way. Using whatever uh, language uh, testing framework that you chose, uh, you can write your assertions. For Java, I'm going to write it as a assert equals. And uh, assert equals is an is a API provided by the JUnit library. So I just need to import this uh, function so I can use it. So I would assert that uh, I will have a new uh, magic uh, sequence. Uh, I have a new magic sequence. And uh, from this magic sequence, if I try to get the first number, I'm trying to see that. Uh, I'm, assert, I'm asserting that uh, for, this, um, for, this, for this magic new sequence, if I get the first number, I should get zero. So this is my first test case. And uh, then, uh, once I have this test case, uh, you can notice that there are already some errors. So I'm going to make those uh, compilation errors disappear first before I implement uh, the, the logic. Um, so I will, uh, as I will show you, uh, I'm going to use some of the shortcuts in this IDE, uh, which makes uh, the, the coding easier. So I'm going to introduce the class called magic sequence here, uh, where I'm going to put it under this uh, main Java package. This is just some Java convention. Ignore this if you, are, uh, if you find this piece uh, unknown to you. Uh, otherwise, uh, now I have this uh, magic sequence. And uh, then next step is uh, it shows that I don't have this uh, get function or get method. So I'm going to uh, implement this one as well in this class. So this function will uh, uh, take in our integer uh, as uh, input. Uh, for this input, I will just call this one as uh, index. And uh, then. Uh, yeah, then uh, this is the empty function. And OK, so I have a test case. And uh, there seems to be no compilation error. Oh, actually, there is. Uh, this function needs to return something. Let's see if I'm going to return minus 1 now randomly. And let's see, uh, do I have the um, test case right now? If I run the test case, uh, mm, OK, uh, where's my test case? Uh, yeah, command shift R, but uh, then in the presentation mode, it does not uh, display that. Uh, unfortunately, I need to. Command shift T. Mm. Command shift T. Ah. Yeah, okay. Command shift T. Okay. Does it work in this way? Um, okay. Uh, you can see some ugly window below, and uh, which uh, shows that my first test case is failing. Uh, and uh, in my first test case, I'm asserting that my first magic number should be 0. Um, but then my current uh, implementation returns me minus 1. So OK, uh, so now uh, I'm moving from the, remember, for TDD, there are three steps. First step, implement your test case. Uh, second step, make your test case pass. So I'm already done with the first step. My test case is done. And it's already asserting uh, my uh, those first number should be 0. And then it's time for me now to move on to, to the implementation to make this test case pass. And remember, uh, the, the second step is to ma make the minimum changes that you can, uh, or simplest changes you can, uh, uh, to make your test case pass. And in this case, I, I, I don't know anything uh, extra. I only know that the, the, fir the first one should be, uh, the first number should be zero. So the simplest thing I can do here is just to return zero, right? And this may look a bit silly right now, but uh, uh, it's okay because this is the only thing that I, the only test case I have, and this is the only thing I need to do to make it pass. I don't need to do anything extra. So let me just run the test case. Um, uh, I'm running the test case again, and now it should be passing. Maybe I should just uh, move my window to, um, okay, um, move this window to the right. Um, Dark mode, floating mode. 
Mm. Maybe window mode. Um, oh, it does, it's not. It's not better. <laughs> okay. Uh, whatever. Maybe just uh, move to right. Okay. Hmm. Mm. Okay. Uh, I'm not sure whether this is better. So now ha we have this uh, first test case, and uh, you can see that now it's already passing because I just implemented the function to make it pass. And now let's go down to the second number. Um, Sorry, before that, can I just get a sense of has everybody got the first test case written, failed, and then passing? Who's not got it so far? Okay, so maybe let's just get everybody to get the sure. test case. Uh, okay, uh, Michael, maybe let's uh, pause the recording first. Uh, let's give people some time. Okay, uh, yeah, usually uh, it's a bit hard to get started, but once you start it, uh, once you're done with your first test case and make it pass, then the second one, third one will be uh, easier. Let's see, the second one, uh, the second number in this sequence is one. So again, I'm going to uh, change my code to make this pass, but firstly, I need to write a test case first. Um, OK, let's start by writing the second test case. Uh, OK, the second test case would say, oops, um, it say that uh, the second number, um, I'm just changing it. Second number is 1. OK, and so I just need to change my test case. Uh, the second number uh, argument should be 2, and uh, the second number should be 1. Okay, it's all done with the test case. Quickly copy paste and uh, oh, copy paste is a bad habit, but uh, for this case it's okay. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever. Uh, write the second test case. Uh, and if you run the, if you run your second test case before you make any change in your code, uh, then you should be failing. Like what I'm running here. Um, oops. Uh, so I need to do it. Um, Mm. So I just need to run the whole thing. Okay, uh, I got my second test failing. Uh, but it's failing because uh, I haven't modified my code, and uh, my code is still, even for the second element, my code is still returning zero. But then the expectation is second element should be one. Uh, are you guys all at this step now? We are all at the same pace? OK, cool. So now let's think about uh, we are moving from, for TDD, we are done with the first step. The test case is filling now. And now let's move on to the, uh, to the main code to make the test case pass. So let's think about it. How can we make the both test case pass? Uh, uh, what are the minimum changes we can make here? So it seems that uh, the, if the argument is 1, I'm going to return 0. And if the argument is 2, I'm going to return 1. So based on this two test case here, I think the min minimum thing I can do here is just to change this return value from 0 to index minus 1. Do, do you agree with me? Right? This is the probably, uh, there could be other implementations. But for now, to me, uh, just given these two test cases, in order to make them pass, this seems to be a decent implementation. Just just taking the index, minor, minor it by one, and then let's see. Uh, should it, it should pass now? Um, yeah, both test cases are passing. So can you also quickly um, implement your test case to make the pass as well? Do you all make it pass? <laughs> uh, so we probably need to constantly pause and resume, pause and resume. It's a OK, uh, now we have the second uh, test case passed. Uh, but before I move on to the third uh, test case, do I miss something? Do I miss one step? Yes. Uh, yeah, that's easily forgotten. So for now, before I move on to the third uh, test case, 
I need to have a look at my test cases and my code to see are there anything that uh, I possibly need to refactor. Uh, my code is pretty simple, and uh, I don't think I need to change anything. And my test case, uh, there seems to be a bit of uh, duplication here, but I'm not sure at this moment. So for, for now, I would just decide to leave it as is. And uh, OK, now I'm done with my thinking on the refactoring part. In a typical development, this usually happens in a few seconds. You just quickly check your code. Is it good? Yes, then move on. And then my first test case, let's see what is the first one. Third, sorry, what is the third one? OK, the next number is also 1. So, okay, the next number is 1. And then uh, let's start by implementing our test case to make that assertion. OK, the third number, number is, uh, is 1 as well. So I just need to change my argument from 2 to 3. And this basically assert that my third number should be 1. And if I run this test case again, uh, you can see that my test case is failing right now because uh, the, uh, according to my implementation, if I pass in the number 3, uh, this value uh, returned here would be 2, uh, which is not 1. And, uh, but this, for this test case, I'm expecting the third element to be 1 as well. So my test case is failing. Uh, do you all have this failing test case now? Do you have a filling test case now? Uh, maybe let's pause for a while. Pass, uh, but at this stage, there will be different possible implementations. You can choose your own, and uh, I will just choose mine. In this case, I'm just saying that, OK, my rule um, used to work here. Uh, but now with the third argument, uh, with a new argument, it doesn't work anymore. So one possible way for me to make this change is I would just say if index is smaller than 3, um, I will just use this old logic. Um, otherwise, I will just return whatever uh, result I need. In this case, uh, they are expecting a 1 as a result. I will just return 1 as a result. So OK, after this, I'm, just run the test case. I, I'm going to run the test case, test case again. And uh, yeah, it all passed. OK, uh, do you all make your test case pass now? I will give you probably uh, five minutes. Uh, for JavaScript test library, they allow you to write some description for your test case using a describe uh, sentence or whatever. You really, in that sentence, you need to pre put some uh, some sentence or words to describe the purpose of that test case. But in just like what I'm doing here for this for this test case, I'm writing. So I usually uh, choose to make the test case longer, uh, so that it's more descriptive to test to to basically express what I'm testing now. And now we have the third test case and uh, it's passing again. Uh, before we move forward, uh, we need to just uh, pause quickly, check uh, are there anything to refactor. Uh, again, the code looks simple. Uh, and test case, again, there are some du duplications. But uh, for this one, uh, if I'm, uh, there, there's a choice here. Uh, uh, if for you guys, if you're familiar with something called uh, parameterized test, uh, or basically, there are some utilities in every language. When you write test cases, you can write some test case that uh, take in some uh, dynamic arguments uh, from, the, uh, uh, from, the, so, from some, kind of, some, some kind of source. And uh, if you use that, you can simplify your test cases. You can just write one test case, and that test case can test all the scenarios, like taking the first element, second element, third element, et cetera. Um, but uh, for now, uh, I'm still happy with this, so I would not uh, do further changes. And let me start with the fourth uh, test case. Um, OK, uh, I'm going to start the fourth one. The fourth test case is. Uh, the next number is 2. Let's write the test case and uh, to make it uh, fitting and before we make it a pass.
the force number is um, 2 Okay, I wrote, I wrote this test case, the first step, and uh, if I run it, it should be filling, right? Okay, it's, it failed, and then the next step is to make your code changes to make it pass. Uh, so now I'm moving a bit faster because I see that many of you already got this idea and the sequence. So let's uh, do it a bit faster. So now uh, I just need to make this test case pass. So how do I make it pass? Uh, if I pass a number of four, I'm expecting uh, two retained. Um, so what is the pattern here? Um, now I'm going to, uh, given enough test cases, I'm trying to uh, make some observation in the pattern and uh, also try to implement the pattern in my code. So it seems that, uh, um, it seems that uh, starting from this uh, third uh, number onwards, uh, I can observe the pattern. Like the third number, one, uh, is the sum of the previous two numbers, like zero, zero and one. And four, uh, the fourth element, which is two, is also a sum of the previous two elements. So in this case, I, I found this pattern. So I'm going to uh, implement this pattern in my code. Uh, so what, what I'm going to change here is I will change my implementation to uh, return, uh, return the result of the first two elements. I'm going to use a feature called uh, recursion uh, in programming. For those uh, who are not familiar with this, basically recursion is a function that calls itself and uh, by passing in some uh, simplified or a different argument that to simplify the problem. Uh, in this case, I'm saying that I'm going to call the same get function again, um, but uh, with the different uh, index. Those two different index basically represent the two previous numbers. Uh, one is index minus one, uh, which is the previous one, and the index minus two is the previous two. So uh, basically this line is saying that if I want to get a number at this index, I just need to get the number at the previous one and another number at the, the one before the pre previous one. And then I take a sum of those two. I write my code in this way because I notice that there is a pattern here. Like uh, this number is a sum of the previous two and this number two is also a sum of the previous two. So I'm going to write my uh, logic in this way and uh, to make this code pass. Uh, if I just run my code, it should be passing now. So now I'm done with my uh, second step. So I, read a, I, read, I wrote a filling test case, I make the test case pass. And my third step, uh, do I need to do some refactoring? Uh, at this stage, uh, now it seems that uh, I'm, uh, I found a problem. Actually, I should notice this problem just now. I um, have some duplicated code here. I'm trying to reconstruct this uh, new magic sequence one by one. And uh, I seem, it seems a duplication because I just need one instance of this class. Uh, for those who are writing code in Java, you probably follow my code and you also have this issue. But if you are writing a JavaScript, et cetera, and uh, you, write, you, you just have a function and you may not have this duplication, but then that's fine. For me, I noticed that uh, this duplication uh, in my test case. So I'm not happy about it. And for now, before I move on to my new test case, uh, I'm going to do some quick refactoring uh, to remove or extract, uh, to, to extract this common thing into a variable so that I can reuse it. And uh, the basically, it's a reminder that you, you need to refactor your test case as well to make them easier to re read and maintain. So for me, I'm going to do a refactoring. Uh, in, in, in Java, if you use this IDE, uh, it provides some of the uh, easy tools for you to do the refactoring. In this case, I'm going to extract this uh, new magic sequence as a variable uh, in the field. And uh, I want to uh, set up this variable in the setup phase of each of the test suite. So as you can see that uh, this IDE generated this chunk for me. So basically, uh, when the, before, the task, before each test case, they're going to create a variable called uh, magic sequence. And I can use this uh, variable in all my test cases. So in this case, I'm going to just quickly uh, reuse this uh, variable. Uh, oops. Um, I'm going to reuse this uh, variable and by just doing a replacement. Okay, uh, do a replace, replace, replace. That's it. So now I removed some of the duplications and the, 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 the test case looks a bit better. And uh, let me just run it. Um, 
sorry. Um, the test case still passed. So basically, uh, for those who are not familiar with t uh, the term refactoring, uh, it basically is a process to improve your code, imp change your implementation, or, or, or making your code either to read, either to maintain, but it does not change the behavior of the code. Uh, and we, do, we know that in this case, I don't, do not change the behavior of the code because my test case still passed. And I, did, I didn't change my, uh, my, uh, this, this log logic itself. So the behavior is, re is maintained. And, uh, uh, and I just made some refactoring to make, make the test case easier, uh, sorry, uh, uh, cleaner. Uh, then one more thing I noticed that uh, now I have this uh, four test case here. And uh, OK, uh, I seem that I found a pattern. And, um, but I'm not sure whether this pattern is correct or not. So let's, uh, let's see the next number in this sequence. So the next number in this sequence is 3. Uh, again, so let's uh, start by writing the, the test case to uh, express this uh, condition. I will write another test case here. And uh, in this case, I will see the fifth number is uh, 3. OK, uh, I, I'm adding a new test case, and uh, let me run it. OK, uh, this test case does not fail. Uh, basically, that seems that I found the right pattern in this sequence. and. Uh, uh, without writing or making new changes to the code, uh, my new test cases automatically succeed already, uh, which is a, which is a kind of a, the, the clue that I probably already got the pattern in this sequence. Let me just check. Uh, let's see. Uh, okay. Oh, okay. In the end, uh, this the the fact is this sequence is actually called the Fibonacci uh, number sequence. And for those who are familiar with uh, mathematics, so this sequence is basically defined in this way. So it starts from uh, either 0 or 1. And then uh, the uh, next number in the sequence is always the sum of the previous two. So this is the definition of this, uh, uh, of this uh, uh, number sequence. And I just uh, discovered this pattern while I'm writing uh, this, this code here. I get a number one by one, and I slowly I found out the pattern in this sequence, and I implemented the, the pattern uh, in my code. OK, uh, now it seems that it's working. But again, remember the last step of the uh, implementation is always do the refactoring, either in your code or in your test case. So in this case, I found that uh, um, they, um, my test cases seems to be duplicating each other, because here I have a rule saying that uh, from the third number onwards, it should always be a sum of the previous two numbers. So which means all these three test cases here, uh, the, the, the test case for the third number, for the fourth number, and the fifth number, actually uh, they are all testing the same behavior or testing the same rule in my code. Uh, so they, in this sense, they are kind of uh, duplicating each other. So I, I would, in this case, uh, just change the name of this test case to make it uh, more descriptive according to the real rule or behavior it, it tests. So in this case, uh, I will change it to, um, uh, I will say third, uh, third number onwards uh, is a uh, uh, sum of two previous numbers or previous two numbers. So, so I'm changing the description of this test case to make to make basically reflect what behavior it is testing in my code. And for those who are writing your uh, your program using JavaScript, you need to change the description in your describe block or eat uh, block whatever uh, to make sure that the, the description of your test case match exactly what you are testing. And uh, in this case, I I could just. Uh, um, copy this uh, assert equals here and uh, delete all the other uh, few test cases. Uh, in this case, uh, I, after I do that, I should run all this thing again just to make sure that I don't break anything. Uh, just run them again. So my test cases are still passing. Uh, OK, uh, maybe I should pause for a while and uh, just make sure you guys also uh, uh, 
finish your changes. Make sure that uh, you should uh, also, in the end, uh, have three test cases. One test case to check that the first number is 0. Second test case to check uh, the second number is 1. And then you have another test case to basically uh, asserting that from the third number onwards, uh, the value is always a sum of the previous two numbers. In the end, uh, you should have these three test cases by after you do some refactoring of your, uh, your test cases. And then they should, they should also pass as well. Do you all have this now? I'll give you a few minutes. Make sure that you all arrive at this step. So now we are done with this uh, uh, test case. So, but usually uh, at this stage, you probably, again, uh, you can now look at your code to see that uh, are there anything that you want to test or you want to uh, uh, do some assertion. So one thing I notice is uh, um, for this function, uh, uh, I, uh, it seems that uh, the original uh, requirements is that uh, it's starting from uh, zero. Sorry. Um, OK, sorry. Uh, just let's take a step back. So what I'm saying, trying to say is for this parameter index, uh, it probably doesn't make sense to, uh, to pass me a zero or negative number because I'm trying to get the first number in the sequence, second number, et cetera. So this parameter, by right, it should always be uh, positive. Uh, so it doesn't make sense to have a zero or negative number. So in that case, uh, typically, uh, as a good programmer, you want to uh, write your code that to, uh, to check those conditions and probably throw some errors or exceptions when, when you are receiving that kind of argument. Again, so let's quickly do it for now. And, uh, but in order to do it, uh, so uh, do not write changes in your code right away. Uh, so you should start with a test case. So for Java, typically I would write in this way. I would write a new test case. And uh, this test case would just say, uh, this one should test. Or rather, I can see that um, uh, exception, uh, exception is thrown uh, when uh, index is, uh, let's say, is zero. Or negative. I can just have a test case for zero first. And basically, uh, if I'm going to call this a magic sequence dot get uh, zero, um, I'm expecting some exception. And depending on the library you're using, uh, if you're using uh, uh, if you're using JavaScript, you probably need to do some assertion to to expect that some error uh, is thrown from the function. And uh, every test library have different ways of handling that. So you probably need to check the documentation of the test library you use to see how you can assert the error is thrown from a function. For Java, uh, typically using JUnit4, you can just uh, do uh, th this way. You see, for this test case, I'm expecting uh, illegal argument exception that is thrown uh, from this particular function. And uh, this is how I write a test case uh, to assert that uh, I got exception from this. And if I run it, um, you can see that this test case should fail uh, because I haven't uh, handled this particular scenario uh, in my code yet. Uh, so I could just see that. Uh, um, so I could see that if index is zero, then um, I should throw a new illegal argument exception and uh, give some description saying that uh, the index must be positive. And after I do this, so I'm already moving on to the second phase of the TDD. I made the test case fail, and now I'm, uh, I'm doing some code changes, uh, the minimum changes I can make to make the test case pass. So now after this change, if just I run the test case again, it should be passing. And I know that uh, I need to probably, uh, I should just add another test case uh, to make sure that exception should also be shown if uh, the if the index is negative. So I just pass in a different number here, minus 1. And uh, uh, in this case, uh, let me just run the test case and uh, uh, to see whether it's failing. Yeah, it's failing. Uh, but why? Uh, OK. Uh, Hmm, I haven't handled it, and then why is it? Uh, oh, sorry. Oh, okay. Um, yeah, you're right. Uh, so in this case, I haven't uh, handled this particular situation. I'm expecting this function to give me an exception, but it's not uh, showing that error or exception. So that's why I have this uh, test failure here. Uh, in order to make this pass, I'm moving on to the second phase of the TDD, which is to make the code changes 
the minimum change I can make here is just to see that if the index is uh, less than or equal to zero, I'm going to throw that uh, exception. Uh, with this simple change, I'm going to run my test case again, and uh, it should be passing. OK, so uh, yeah, I think at this stage, uh, I'm uh, happy with the uh, code already. So if you look at the test case, you, have a, um, you should have, a, uh, let's say, five test cases. The five test cases basically say, test that the first number is 0, second number is 1, and the, from the third number onwards, the, it's a sum of the previous two. And you also tested the two uh, error scenarios, one for the negative index and one for the zero index. And uh, all the test cases are passing. So in this case, it's a good indication that uh, you're probably uh, done uh, with your implementation. There are nothing more to test, and uh, you can uh, move on to your next task. Are you all at this stage now? Or do you have any questions? How many test cases if it is really advice to have for a function? For uh if you double go maybe uh, the number of test cases really depends on the problem itself. Uh, usually, let's see, when you write a function and the, uh, or you're trying to solve a problem, let's see the problem, there might be four scenarios. So typically, you need to have a four test cases, one test case to cover each scenario. Uh, and then you pr probably need to write more test cases to cover the, the, the cases when people give you the bad arguments or uh, some runtime error, et cetera. So you, that basically means that you need to have at least four test cases one covering each scenario, and plus some extra ones. OK, are we all good? OK, uh, so let's just uh, do a quick recall what we did just now. And unfortunately, the, the, se the session is a kind of uh, is a bit long, so we, you probably already forgot about what you did just now. So let's recall together. So what we did is uh, we start from an empty project. We wrote the first test case describing the, what we expect for the first number. Then write the, the code to make the first test case pass. And then uh, review, do we have any refactoring? Uh, if there's no refactoring, let's move on to the second, second number or second case. So we repeat this process for the second number, third number, fourth number. Along the way, uh, we discovered uh, some patterns in these numbers. So that allow us to change the implementation. Uh, but each, each, uh, each time when we make the changes to the implementation, all our existing test cases still need to pass to basically to verify that uh, the, the old behavior are kept. And the, your new test case uh, would change from failing to pass as well. So this is basically the rhythm of uh, TDD. Um, have a new when you have a new case to handle, run test case for it. Have a failure test case, making some changes to make the test case pass, and then do some refactoring. So you keep doing this cycle again, and again. Uh, so so now it's probably uh, time for me to share with you a few uh, rules that uh, you should follow uh, uh, when you do TDD development. Strictly speaking, these are not really rules that are uh, written into the stones or whatever. So more, it's more of a kind of a tips or guidelines. But for you, since you're beginners, in the beginning, I would rather you to just treat this as rules and follow them. After some time, once you're totally familiar with TDD, you can probably uh, have your own views, whether certain rules are right or certain rules are wrong. And then in that case, it's probably more of just a tip or guideline to you. But for now, let's treat this as rules. So the first rule. Uh, Always start with a test case. So don't try, don't ever write your production code before you have your first field test case. So it's a rule to follow, remember. And second rule, uh, you should only have one filling test at a time. So uh, again, uh, sometimes uh, the beginners, uh, you might uh, have a few, you write a few test cases and they're all filling. Uh, then you start to write your code to make all those test cases pass. So uh, that's, that's a kind of a bad idea. Uh, so instead of doing that, you should really start from one test case that is failing, make it pass, before you move on to the second test case. Uh, another one, uh, you, should, uh, you should write small test. Uh, so why do I call it small test? 
Um, there are a few uh, criteria for us to determine whether that test case is small in enough or not. So one criteria is the test case, or each test case, should focus on one particular scenario or feature or behavior of the system that is under test. And it should also take you a very short time for you to make it pass. Uh, I put a number here like less than 10 minutes, but you can put your own number there. Uh, you can see that uh, maybe less than seven minutes, less than five minutes, whatever. So the idea is uh, you should not spend a lot of time to make the test case pass. If you spend too much time, that basically means the test case is probably too big. You're testing a, 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 a feature that is too complicated. You should break that down and uh, write uh, smaller test cases. And you should also, uh, for every test case, t typically there should be one reason to fail. Uh, so that uh, usually that basically means that uh, uh, if you're writing a test case, and uh, you should usually have uh, one assertion per test case. If you only have one assertion per test case, uh, typically there is only one reason why uh, that test case would fail. If you have multiple assertions in one test case, then uh, that basically means that in general there could be different reasons why that test case may fail. It, but what happens if that, like, if you have three assertions in your test case, the first one fails, and then the next, second one, third one are not executed at all. In that case, uh, you you never know whether your system meet the expectation of those few assertions that never get a chance to execute. So in general, people would say that. If you want to keep your, your, small, your test small, try to make sure that they only have one reason to fail. And the one practice is just to make sure that uh, the, each, each one of them uh, only have one assertion. And uh, another rule, um, so which we stated before, when you are trying in the second step of the TDD, when you are implementing your business logic to make your test case to pass, try to focus on your current test case. Just write enough code to make your test case pass and nothing extra. Do not handle the whatever error scenarios that pop up in your mind, but is not related to the scenario handling. So you, if you really pop up in your mind, you can't handle it right now, just drop it down as a, on a note on a piece of paper or somewhere. You remind yourself, hey, uh, once I finish my current uh, scenario test case, I will move on to this new, new scenario, and you will handle it later. Do not uh, let your mind be distracted into uh, unrelated stuff. The next rule, uh, you, you sh when, whenever you try to make the test case pass, there will be different choices. Uh, so you can, usually the good choice is uh, follow something simple first, and uh, uh, later once you discover more and more patterns in the, in, in, the, in the scenarios or cases, then you can try to generalize your algorithm, or grow your algorithm into, uh, in, into something uh, more general uh, that will probably fit into the pattern you discover. So this, just now in the example we show you, you can probably start uh, from uh, returning, zero, returning zero, and then you change the code to returning index minus one. Uh, whenever you discover new patterns, you keep modifying or, or adjusting your algorithm to fit in the patterns that, that you just discovered, until eventually you discover the pattern is uh, every number is just a sum of the previous two. Then at that time, you just evolve your algorithm to, to, uh, to express the pattern that you discovered. Uh, numbers, rule number six, uh, do not forget about refactoring. Uh, so this is uh, very common, uh, even for uh, the, the, the senior developers. Uh, what sometimes they also get into the habit of writing test case, make the pass, move on. Forgetting about that, okay, it's time to look into the code uh, and then do some refactoring before you move on to the new one. Um, if you keep doing refactoring on your code, uh, your, your code will be uh, always in good shape and which means it's easier for you to make further changes to handle new scenarios or new test cases. Uh, next rule, uh, remember to reflect your test case too. Uh, so treat your test cases as your production code as well. So it should be in good shape, it should be in good quality as well, which means you need to constantly look into your test cases, find out the places which have uh, duplications, or uh, uh, find out the part that is hard to understand, and uh, do some refactoring on it, so that uh, the test case is also easier to maintain in the long run. Uh, next rule, uh, which is, again, uh, very common. Uh, so people, uh, when you are trying to uh, make, your, make, make, make some changes to your code to make a test case pass, and you, you notice some of the ugly code somewhere, and your mind will tell you, hey, uh, shall I just do some changes to change that ugly code, make it look nicer? And uh, no, don't do that. Uh, so basically, uh, remember yourself, remind yourself, you should only be in one of those three stages at a time. You should either be writing a test case, 
or you should be making that test case pass, or you should be doing refactoring. Do not mix the sec second step and the third step. Do it one by one. Make, make your code pass first, and then you have enough time to do whatever refactoring you like to make the, make, 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 make the code prettier or, or better. So those are the uh, eight rules or guidelines or tips. Uh, so later I can share these slides with you. And uh, if you need, you can probably uh, uh, review those uh, eight uh, tips later. Um, but now uh, I would like to talk a bit more about the baby steps. So in the few rules just now, uh, I highlighted that uh, um, if you recall in the rule number, uh, maybe the, the first few, I keep mentioning things like baby steps. Uh, baby steps uh, just have one failure test case at a time. Uh, baby steps write small test case. Uh, baby steps uh, write uh, enough production code to make the test case pass. So all these things, I call them uh, baby steps. Uh, it's important uh, for a reason. Uh, so how many of you have uh, played this kind of game before in school or somewhere? Like uh, people, they are tied together. Their, their legs, legs are tied together using some probably strings. Uh, and then you, are, you, are, you need to move two or three or even more people needs to move together and as a group. And the first group who reached the destination wins. And uh, I, I did this before. And the lesson I learned is uh, many groups, they try to be uh, rushing. So they, uh, they, when, when, they, when, when they start, some, some people, some group, they will start to, to try to run as fast as they can, and usually in bigger steps. And many of them, they will just fall down. Or the string just broke, uh, just, just break, and then they violate the rules. So some of the groups I noticed that uh, they, uh, they, they, they try to be cautious. Uh, they move in uh, smaller steps. Uh, however, they can actually move still pretty uh, rapid. It's, yes, it's small steps, but they move rapidly. And uh, over the, uh, actually, in the end, the group for, for the game that I played with, the, the group who won who was actually the group who pr practiced this kind of uh, smaller steps and the rapid steps. For all the other groups who were trying to run faster, eventually they all fell down or broke some rules. Uh, so this is basically the same reason why uh, the baby steps in TDD helps you. For every step, uh, as long as it's a, it's, a, it's a steady step, as long as it's towards the right direction, and uh, it helps you move a bit closer to what you want to do. And because it's small, it's easier to, to because it's small, you can easily uh, quickly make it work, and then you move on to the next one. And once you get into this kind of rhythm, you will notice that you're actually moving very quickly towards the end solution. So you, in order to get a feel of this, you need to uh, start writing more code in this way and uh, practice it. So sooner or later, you'll feel that, yes, uh, baby steps actually helps you. Uh, but then, uh, so some of you might be asking this question later. Uh, so uh, can we move in bigger steps? Uh, so the general advice for beginner is uh, try not to move in bigger steps. Uh, but later, sooner so or later, uh, you will grow into senior dev. You will have uh, a lot of coding experience. And then you will le learn some of the chances that you might be able to move a bit faster uh, under some, some situations. So uh, for, for today, um, I would like you to uh, have a feeling of that um, by doing that exercise again. Basically, for this Fibonacci number uh, exercise, uh, I would like you to delete your current project um, close your IDE, delete the project, start from, start from the new again. Uh, but this time, we can do it a bit differently. Because uh, let's see, I'm, going to, uh, I'm asking you to write a, a code that generates numbers from this sequence. Uh, but instead of just now, I tell you the number one by one, uh, which requires you to really move in very small steps to discover the pattern slowly and uh, modifying your, your algorithm along the way to fit your pattern. But this time, let's write it a bit differently. We will still do it in a TDD style, but I will tell you the uh, requirement or the, 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 the problem up front. So you're going to write a f code to generate this uh, Fibonacci sequence. And uh, there are only three rules you, you need to implement. The first one is the first element is 0. Second element is 1. And then from the third element onwards, every element is uh, the sum of the previous uh, two elements. So with these three uh, rules here, or with these three pieces of requirements here, uh, so if you follow TDD, uh, you just actually you can easily start 
uh, uh, new the first test case um, to test the first one, second test case to test this one, and third test case to test the third one. And uh, I would I would rec recommend you to do this again. Just uh, repeat your 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 coding exercise just now once again, but using this uh, new uh, requirements, and then have a feel how how would it be different from the the experience you had just now. And for extra brownie points, you can try a different language. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but it's okay. Uh, so now, okay, let's pause for recording and uh, let's. I will chase you. Delete your code base. OK, uh, let's start again. Uh, OK, uh, so did you feel the difference this time compared with your first exercise? How many of you feel that you are moving faster than the previous one? Uh, OK, some of them. Uh, yeah, you probably need to uh, go back and uh, then do the exercise again, com uh, compare it with two approaches. Uh, basically, uh, uh, in the end, uh, I hope that you, what you can feel is uh, uh, whenever you get into a new problem that uh, you, you're not familiar with uh, or into a problem where the kind of requirements uh, is not so clear that there are certain uh, patterns uh, you need to discover along the way, in that kind of situations, uh, the advice is uh, you should move uh, in uh, smaller steps. Uh, so whatever you, the test case you write, probably you should uh, make sure that you exercise, uh, assert on a very small feature instead of a bigger one. And also for the, for the code changes you make, uh, so try not to uh, write a very generic, uh, complicated algorithm to start in the beginning. Try to start with a simpler algorithm and then uh, make the algorithm more, generic, uh, more general uh, based on the new facts, uh, new uh, requirements that you, di you discovered uh, along the line. And then but there are also other scenarios like the one that you saw just now. If you are familiar with the problem, like you know Fibonacci number sequence pretty well, the moment you see this sequence, you know, ah, yeah, it just is three rules, um, nothing else, probably with a few plus, a few more error situations you, you need to handle. Otherwise, that's it, that's it then you're familiar with the problem, or if you, the, the problem, the pattern is well known. Uh, so if someone asks you to implement a standard well-known algorithm, like a quick sort or, or whatever, uh, those things are standard, right? And then uh, as long as things are standard, as long as it's well known, then uh, you can allow uh, yourself to move maybe a bit faster, using a bigger, bit, big, uh, well, it may not be faster, but at least uh, in uh, bigger steps. So as a beginner, maybe uh, the good advice is always start from the smaller baby steps. Uh, because even though you remind yourself, uh, take small steps, take small steps, uh, your old habit will still sometimes drag you into the, the using the bigger steps or, or, or even writing function codes without writing test case. The old habits are hard to kill. So you need to constantly remind yourself uh, this few, uh, few tips. Um, okay. Uh, so previously, I planned uh, another exercise for today, uh, but uh, uh, I think time-wise, uh, we only have a half an hour left. Uh, it's probably not enough for us to do it this time. Uh, I encourage you guys to come back uh, next, for the next session. Uh, two weeks later, again, uh, Saturday afternoon, two weeks later, uh, we will still continue our learning on TDD. And uh, uh, so next time when we come here, once you guys already have the foundation, we will move on to something a bit more challenging. You know, it, it could be an exercise of uh, writing a function or class, a code uh, to convert uh, or generate uh, the Roman numerals, uh, things like that. Um, okay, I'll give you this topic here, but I could change this for the next week. So, <laughs> so but anyway, uh, uh, yeah, you can try to do some exercise like this going, going home as well. And next time you come back, you might uh, feel that uh, you are moving faster than others. Uh, anyway, so uh, next time uh, we will do more exercise uh, to practice TDD. And for today, uh, let's probably do some uh, reflection. Uh, you guys wrote some code, and probably some of you write the, the code in TDD approach for the first time. Uh, I would like to hear about your thoughts, your feelings, and uh, our questions. So we can probably discuss. Uh, if, typically, for, I, I don't, I, I'm not a beginner anymore, so I may not feel some of the challenges or pains or questions as some of you might feel. So just raise your questions. If I don't, if I didn't address some of the 
uh, the aspect clearly, it's time for you to uh, ask, and we can discuss as a group together to reflect on what we did and what we learned. Um, so um, did you guys have any surprises that didn't meet your expectation? That, like, before you came, you probably have some impression on TDD or some expectation on TDD. Or, or are there anything that uh, didn't really meet your expectation or surprise you? Does anyone want to raise your hand? Don't be shy. Yeah. I mean, I expected to write a lot more tests up front mm -hmm. and write the codes to pass all the tests. Mm. I didn't expect it to be like you know, one really small test and then uh, just anything that passes this test, even though it doesn't really solve the bigger problem. Yeah. Great. Uh, uh, again, uh, now do you understand the reason why? Why uh, it's better to just start with one test instead of a multiple test? Mm. Not fully convinced. Huh? <laughs> uh, you can try. Uh, again, the way to convince yourself is probably try different approaches and see the difference. But the easy way for me to convince you is uh, one of the benefits for TDD is to, to, to help to drive your mind. Right? If you only have one field test case and your mind is uh, uh, kind of uh, driven by that and you focus on that particular test case to make it a pass. But if you have so many test cases filling, and uh, then which one are you focusing on? Uh, so. Right? You, you basically, you kind of lost some uh, benefits of writing the test case first. You really don't want to be like, distracted. Oh my god, so many cases, cases building right now. Which one should I, should I fix this? No, you just write enough tests, enough code, and then you slowly progress along the mm. way. Right? So it can be very stressful. You see all the, all the X's, crosses in your, in your, in your screen, right? Yeah. Mm. More? Victor. <laughs> um, actually, I use the language that I was familiar with, so I didn't get mm. much surprises. Okay. Um, but I, I did get a minor surprise. I part of um, actually testing for error handling. Mm. That's something new. To me. Uh, surprisingly, it was fine. We have inbuilt methods in, at least in JavaScript, that I could access to test for errors. Uh, I mean, Asserting errors. Mm. You don't have to write your own methods to assert errors. That was quite interesting. Cool. Oh, you learned something new. Uh, anyone? Do you want to mention your surprises? OK. I feel like it's a, it's a very disciplined thing to do. Mm. Because uh, when I was doing it, I this urge to skip a step and then write a few more tests and then, and then write uh, like skip steps. Mm. Yeah, uh, you are right on the spot. So this thing is uh, basically a discipline, and uh, uh, that's why uh, we sometimes, for let's say for ThoroughWorks, uh, we promote the pair programming. Um, you are kind of working with a pair, and uh, you are basically uh, helping each other to follow these disciplines. And if your pair uh, basically uh, miss some steps, it's your responsibility to remind him or her. Uh, or it's also your personal responsibility to, to watch what you are doing and uh, give you guidance. If you miss something, then uh, uh, you can be reminded. Uh, cool, let's move on. And uh, do you feel any parts that make yourself uncomfortable? Compared to this, uh, your old habit of writing code, do you feel that this approach make you not comfortable? Can okay, you give some examples of why which part makes you uncomfortable? Uh, picking up off like test cases are hard. Like I don't exactly know what I want to test. So it makes I don't know, it's annoying to think about that rather than just implementing hey, I know what this function does. Mm -hmm. But to think from a user perspective like what he wants to see. So that was a different kind of mindset. Right. This is, but this is exactly the benefit that you will get. <laughs> it's just take probably uh, for the first time it takes a bit, uh, takes some time to adjust or, or get used to. And personally, I'm used to writing a function first and then the test case. But uh, in TDD, I realized that we need to write test cases first and then we write the logical function. But that's a bit of a change. 
did it help you that you write the test first before you write the code? Yeah, I, I think it helped me because uh, I can think more about the function earlier before implementing. Mm. Yeah. So yeah. Uh, it's like your function is like black box and you just give it input. This is desired behavior, right? Or desired output. So it's like you don't have to worry about implementation, but think about how people will actually use that code, right? How you will use it and how others could use it, right? Any other? Can I add? Uh, I can phrase this differently. What makes me comfortable about TDD? I found that uh, if I don't know an algorithm very well, uh, writing the first filling test is helps me discover uh, a, a good approach of writing that. Uh, discovering how the algorithm should be written. And so that helped me. Rather than having to think about the algorithm and then bring the other way around. Anything that makes you uncomfortable? I guess you have been doing TDD for some time, so maybe. Uh, <laughs> yeah. But for others who are doing this for the first time, do you feel any parts that really makes you uncomfortable? Yeah, I find that because you write the test first, then when you're writing a test, it feels like you're already writing a function somewhat. So it feels like you're writing it twice. So it feels a little bit slower. Mm, that's a good point. Yeah. Uh, for maybe for this exact uh, exercise, because the problem is actually very simple, uh, the moment you write your test case, the implementation is actually yeah. uh, the roughly same the same. same. Uh, it's, it's not that uh, different. But then, uh, if you tr try this um, on different uh, problems, you can notice that uh, your your expectation and your implementation are generally different. Uh, but yeah, it's good observation. And uh, for for myself, when I started on TDD, uh, I use a language like Java. And if I write test case first, uh, the IDE will give me a lot of uh, right lines in the code, tell me that you don't have this, you don't have that. Uh, I'm not. I wasn't comfortable with that, uh, yeah. but later I found that actually was useful because you notice that I, when I started writing test case uh, first, and the uh, IDE tells me that I don't have that class. And usually the IDE will give me a help. I just need to pre press a short key, a shortcut, and then the IDE will give me a, a ask me, hey, do you want to create this class? If I say yes, they will create the class for me, and even without going the directory or the file to so typing everything by, by myself. The IDE actually offers help whenever they notice something is wrong and then they know how to fix it for you. So actually that makes you uh, fix the problem faster. Yeah, even like uh, the in your test, you, you expect an integer or boolean or whatever, right? Uh, your IDE may also know, oh, you expect the first argument to be integer. You ought to generate a, a class with all that. Mm -hmm. the, 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 right? So you don't have to worry too much about it. So uh, as, you, as you're mo moving uh, from the junior dev or into senior dev, one thing you need to master are the, the, uh, the, the, the features in IDEs. How can they, those features make you faster, make you more productive? Uh, so things like this, uh, you probably take, uh, let's see, uh, 10 seconds or even 20 seconds to write that function by itself. But if you just use a shortcut in the IDE, it just take one or two seconds. Uh, it's, uh, yeah, it's probably tenfold different. <laughs> the, oh, the the area where tests really shine is when some, suddenly your function needs to change. You've written all your tests. Uh, your, your test code will be twice of what the size of the actual implementation. But why if somehow or other there's a new change in the implementation of this function? Instead of giving you taking one argument, now it needs two arguments. Right? So your test can be can easily guide you in making that change as well. Uh, if you still parse that, if you're uncomfortable, they can talk with us uh, offline. Uh, they can discuss about the parts where, why, uh, that what stops you um, to help you get started. Um, okay. Uh, yeah, maybe. Um, uh, how long did it? How long did it take to make one test case pass? Uh, like a few minutes. Then. Okay. Yeah. So. Uh, so I guess uh, in this case, I already kind of uh, gave you the, the hint before. So uh, you, I guess m most of you follow this rule and your test cases are small enough so you can make the pass. Also, this problem is relatively simple. So you can actually make that pass pretty simple, pretty quickly. But in general, uh, if you are going to try this approach on some other um, problems, you may notice that uh, sometimes you write a test case and uh, the test case is probably takes you, let's say, one minute to write. 
and then you found that you spend half an hour to make it pass. You found that the, there are more and more changes you, you, you discover you need to make in order to make the test case change, the te 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 test case pass. So that may happen sometimes as well. And uh, uh, I think in uh, maybe in the next session or in the third session later, we are going to discuss about uh, this kind of issues. It's very uh, typical when people start to doing this kind of TDD approach. They start one test case and uh, then they jump into the implementation and never come back. Uh, the test case never passes. <laughs> so that may happen sometimes. So we need to learn about the, the techniques or tips how to avoid those kind of uh, uh, situation. Um, okay. Uh, then uh, there sometimes people also ask, um, do I need to write tests for every of my function? Uh, if I have 10 functions, uh, some of them are helper functions. Uh, do I need to also write test cases for helper function? And uh, in uh, people who are using language like uh, maybe Java, uh, C sharp, uh, there are concepts of a private method. In the in the class, you can have a fun function uh, that is supposed to be hidden as the implementation detail in that class is not supposed to be visible to the outside world. Do you still need to test that function? So there are questions like this. Uh, so I probably wouldn't give you an answer right away. Uh, you discover this by yourself. You can go back to read online, asking this kind of question online to see what are the people's opinion, and then try it yourself, form your own opinion. Uh, so uh, again, some questions like this, there's no absolutely right or wrong answer. Uh, it's all, in many cases, based on situations. Uh, but uh, you need to learn by yourself, like uh, writing enough code. Uh, then while, while you're writing code, if you hit a situation, and uh, you, you feel that you have to test a private method, ask you why. Uh, why must I test this private method or helper method? Uh, are there any ways of I can do to avoid testing it? Or maybe testing this helper method or function method, helper function is the right thing to do. Uh, so think about it when you, whenever you hit that situation. And if you really need some quick answer, search on Google and read the advices from other people. Okay, uh, sometimes we will ask, uh, can I just write test case later? And uh, it's not even a question, like in, in real products, uh, you definitely will keep the situation when uh, people will just think, um, let's just, uh, they're very interested in solving the problem, let's solve the problem. Test case, fine, let's do it later. Uh, like even for myself, sometimes I feel the eager, okay, I, I, I hit an interesting problem, I know the solution. I really want to write code right away to solve the problem. And writing test case seems to be stopping, is kind of a sitting behind, in between me and the solution. Uh, for, yeah, even for myself, sometimes I might skip this test case driven approach, which is a, is a mis should be mistakes. And we should all watch each other's uh, to, to, to avoid it. Uh, but then why, why sh should we should avoid it? Um, because uh, when you say later, that later may become never. Uh, so once you are done with your feature, right, you, you make it work, looks nice on UI, uh, customers are happy, then you have l really less interest to write more test cases. Uh, to you at that time, writing test cases really seems to be an uh, extra burden. Uh, it's just like um, maybe asking you to write more documentation. You feel that as extra burden, you have less motivation to do it later. And uh, also, uh, you, you might end up writing some code that never get used. So without, uh, for TDD approach, you're kind of uh, guided by the test. Your test tells you what you need. And without those guidance, if you just write your, your code right away, you may build in some extra features, extra functions. You feel that it might be needed, but in the end, it's not. Because you didn't really think from the end user's perspective. You didn't think of whether the piece of function you're writing, is it really needed by them or not? If you don't think from that angle, you might just uh, adding in a lot of stuff that is not needed. One typical example are probably the, the error scenarios. You're thinking of, oh, uh, I probably need to handle this error. I need to handle that error. You handle tens of errors. But uh, how many of them would happen? Uh, you, you, probably, you need to think about it before you do that. If you don't think, you probably write too many. That is not really necessary. And also, in terms of the, 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 the implementation, you might, uh, for a given problem, uh, you might implement an algorithm that is very complicated, that is more capable or more compl complex enough than what's required to solve the problem. You might be feeling that, okay, I probably need this uh, solution tomorrow. Maybe the current problem 
does not need it, but I might need a, the problem might grow bigger tomorrow, and I, which justify my, my, my reason to write a more complicated solution. But that day may never come. And uh, those extra fun feature, extra logic you put in may never get used. Right? That's, that would happen if you do not guide yourself using the real use cases or test cases. And again, uh, if, you start, if, if, if you do not start with the test cases, sometimes you might write code that is very hard to test later. So you definitely, if you hit this problem in your, in your work, right? you, you will find out uh, one day you are trying to, uh, uh, to work on a piece of code that is uh, very fragile. And uh, so you say, fine, let me write some test cases uh, to, to figure out what it does first. But then you, you notice that, oh, it's so hard to test this function. This function, in order to create this function for me to test, you need, it has dependency A, dependency B, C, D, E, F, G. Uh, then basically it's very hard for you even to assemble that function object for you to test. And that's because the people who started that code, that piece of code, they didn't think from the angle of testing. Right? If they start thinking about how to make their code easier for testing, you wouldn't hit that problem later. So do yourself a favor, do other people a favor by thinking about how, when, whenever you write code, how to make it testable. And in, the best way to make it testable is starting from a test case. Right? If you start from a test case, the way that you, you write the code, you naturally uh, make sure that the code eventually will be testable in future. OK. Uh, Another question that people may ask you later is, so what is T in TDD? You see T stands for test. But what is test? Uh, for those who are um, probably um, uh, uh, familiar with it, more familiar with the development, uh, you probably know that there are different type of uh, test cases. So, so there are unit tests. Uh, there are so-called component tests, integration tests, uh, API tests, UI tests, E2E tests, whatever tests. There are actually many. Uh, different names for test. Uh, and uh, typically, um, uh, I can probably give you some quick hint. Typically, uh, whenever people are talking about TDD, uh, they probably mean that uh, it's a uni, uh, unit test. Test, in most cases, what they, what they mean is probably unit test. But in certain cases, what they mean is probably the um, acceptance test uh, or end-to-end or, or -end test. Uh, depending on the situation. So when someone, especially when someone complains to you to say, hey, I tried TDD, it didn't work. It didn't work for me. Uh, then you probably should ask him, uh, why do you say that? What is, what is the test in your case? So typically uh, people find that uh, TDD, if it, T means unit test, it uh, usually can work pretty well. Based on our experience, TDD uh, for unit test works pretty well in your development process. But if someone tried to do TDD using the uh, other type of test, like if your T stands for end-to-end uh, -end test or UI test, and if you try to follow TDD uh, using those kind of test cases, your experience may vary. And sometimes, yes, uh, using TDD approach to write a UI test or end-to-end -end test uh, could be more challenging, and your experience may tell you that that doesn't work well. Uh, so on the internet, people also you find people have arguments whether TDD works or not. Uh, then uh, in those situations, when you jump into those discussions, the first, things, the first thing to clarify, uh, what is uh, your definition of test? Are you talking about unit test? Are you talking about the end-to-end uh, -end test or system test or whatever? Uh, but then the, the, tri tri the tricky thing is, even for the unit test, what is a unit? <laughs> Again, there's no clear definition what is a unit. Uh, some people say unit, a unit is a function. Some people say a unit is a class. Uh, other people actually may, take, may interpret your unit, unit as a, a package or a module. So different people have different in, interpretation even on this unit. Again, uh, in, those, in those situations, try to clarify uh, their understanding of what is the unit as well. OK, uh, so I will stop here. Uh, uh, so these are the, some materials I, I, I prepared for later sessions. Basically, uh, as I men mentioned just now, uh, one of the challenge for people adopting TDD is to start the first test case. For our situation, the exercise we did just now is pretty simple. Uh, it's a no-brainer to pick your first test case. But in a real, uh, more, uh, slightly more complicated problems, you have many choices to pick your first test case. And if, you, if you're not careful, you might pick up, pick up a test case. As I mentioned just now, you take probably one minute to write. And maybe it's been, you spend half an hour or even longer, and you, can, you could still kind of, kind of make it a pass. 
And we need to uh, see some different uh, practices or tips to handle those kind of uh, situations. Basically, how do you pick up your first uh, test case? Um, so for those who are really interested, I can give you a quick uh, reference right now. During the meantime, if you are really uh, interested, you can, uh, there are two good books you can read. Uh, one good book I mentioned just now is called This uh, Test Driven Development by Example. And another good book is called uh, Growing Object Oriented Software Guide Guided by Test. So these two are uh, pretty good books. It's not new. Uh, I think both are written probably almost 10 years back. Uh, but they are classics. Uh, so uh, if you are really interested into this TD TDD approach, these two books are the good materials you can read. Uh, but what I can tell you is uh, these two books uh, give you actually uh, two different uh, approaches on, on approaching, uh, basically in terms of how do you pick what is, it, what is your first test case, how do you start your whole TDD process. These two books actually give you two different approaches. So uh, people actually on the internet uh, call them two different schools. Uh, one school is called London School, another school is called Chicago School. Uh, uh, yeah, it's just some kind of name people given to them. Uh, then uh, both the, the two, uh, the, these two schools, they have different ways of patterns to solve problems. One school will try to solve problems from, from all side in, uh, top down, uh, use a mock, lot of mock objects. Another school tend to uh, build solutions from uh, inside out or from bottom up uh, using the, uh, the, the approach without, uh, with less mock objects. So those two approaches, roughly, uh, you can find out on their route from these two books. So if you have time, if you have interest, read those two books, and uh, you can uh, probably find out on the more details about that. Um, so my plan for, for future sessions is uh, next, next session, two weeks later, uh, we will come back and uh, then do more coding ex exercise using TDD, uh, probably using the, the Roman numeral uh, kata as one exercise. And uh, then uh, probably the third session, uh, we are going to, uh, to practice how to solve the same problem using these two approaches. For the same problem, you can try to solve it using this, uh, uh, this, this outside in approach first, and then try the same problem again using the, the other approach. You can compare by yourself what's the difference between those two. Uh, that's probably our third session. Um, yeah, I guess uh, enough, uh, enough preview for now uh, to, to get your interest for coming back. Um, yeah, so this is uh, the end of this session. Cool. Uh, so if you have any questions, uh, feel free to stay. And uh, you can chat with me or my colleague there. Uh, we, we practice TDD in our project, and uh, we do have some tips to share as well. Uh, if you have any questions, uh, stay, and uh, we can have a chat. Otherwise, I'll see you probably two weeks later. <laughs>